Jeremy Janine. <laughs> Jeremy Janine. Coming at you live or recorded and coming at you later. Kind of live. Kind of live. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah, dude. Let's um let's address the elephant in the room, which is the room that we're in. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. What made you buy a church? Did you buy you, you bought this place? I, I imagine lease it. you lease it. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. What made you choose a church? Um, I was looking around downtown and Central West End, looking at different properties that would be potential ideal spots for a gym. Yeah. And I wanted something that was close enough to the main um, population yeah. without being too pulled away, but also be a decent price. And then when I looked at price per square footage and everything, it, I narrowed it down to two spots. And there was actually another spot that was like twice the size of this place. Yeah. And I was almost able to get it for the same price. And I got so close on the negotiations, the last second they pulled out the deal. Oh. And so then I went for spot number two, which was this. And that's why we are here. It's legit, though. So yeah. you have the whole building? Uh, no. Because so I know there's another building back here. What you see right here is the whole thing. So it's okay. 3,000 square feet. we got bathrooms in the back. And then if you walk out that exit door over there, yeah. on the other side of it and behind that giant wall there, all of that is apartment complexes. Oh, that's all So you've got, they've got like some nice higher end apartments that have like certain features that were already at the cathedral, like the yeah. stained glass windows and the, you know, the castle um, steeple and all that. Yeah. Uh, so they get, I bet you some of these are pretty, some, some pretty crazy apartments i would imagine so dude um it's amazing what you can kind of turn any space into you right know what I mean? with the right uh just creativity and the right, right mindset um this place is awesome dude i mean you got your rig right here in the middle and it, i imagine it just has everything that you need yeah it's like i'm on a mission from god <laughs> <laughs> Dude, your Instagram is one of the funniest things. Oh, thanks. Um, what made you change? So, is is the new, is the gym's new name officially Jehovah's Fitness? Or okay, so um, help me out. Kind of. Um, I'm actually going to be launching a speaking, public speaking, and going around the nation and talking and stuff. Okay. So um, I wanted something really catchy that when I tell people the name, it's not just going to blend in with all the other names out there. Hence right. the name Jehovah's Fitness, where we can save your swole. Save your swole. This is it. Um, so, yeah, that's our, I guess, going to be our tagline. It's like Jehovah's Fitness. We can save your swole. Yeah, dude. And you just, uh, just pray to go door uh, to door. Swole we teach Jesus. People that, yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to slam doors on you then. Yeah, well, so, they might. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like a real catchy name. Um, I don't really actually advertise locally like that. Yeah. Um, because, you know, it's a very religious community. Um, yeah, and so I actually thought I would get a lot of religious pushback from the name alone. Yeah, I would expect that. Uh, but I've got none, and so I was actually kind of hoping for it. I was hoping that, like, at least somebody out there would just be crazy and be out there with, like, picketing and whatever, and then I'd call the news and tell them to cover, like, that these people are going crazy, and yeah. then uh, the news would come, and then i have a big cut story all, yeah, just for free marketing. Yeah, dude. No, I mean, all PR is good PR. Right, and I actually checked with a bunch of my friends that are pastors first, and I checked with the name, and I asked them what they thought, and um, they told told me they didn't think anything wrong with it but then I uh, you know there's always somebody that's going to find something wrong with it yeah I mean yeah I mean somebody will always have an issue right can't make everybody happy yeah so um you know it's it's I think anything you do you're not you're gonna piss someone off yeah and like worse than pissing someone off is going unnoticed absolutely 100 percent. because if you're being your, your authentic self right I mean not everybody's gonna like that right yeah and you're very much so that you uh you posted that uh that clip where I don't know if it was like a musically that you did it on or something oh, yeah, yeah. beforehand but with the Buster Rhymes right the- right <laughs> um yeah so that was uh what was that TikTok that's the new that's the new fun app I like those apps like a lot of these apps are, you know, they're, they're out for a second and then they're gone. Yeah. But if they provide a lot of value to your video editing, for those of you guys who are like social media savvy and you're trying to grow your social media, um, even though some, a lot of these apps are really silly, like you do see people that utilize it to garnish, uh, garner a huge media following. You really can. And so if you're just clever, crafty, and then you use what's already out there, you're basically taking something. I mean, I see people doing the same jokes that I've seen since like the – 80s i guess yeah and but they bust them out on these new apps and it's gold because nobody's seen it on that app before that is true i mean i wonder how many people do that like they oh had, yeah you know they had all this material and then as social media became bigger they just recycled it all right oh i'm sure yeah. and uh the smart people do that yeah the smart people do that and they will recycle it and rewrite it and repost it on every single platform because the information's already there. Yeah. So then it's a simple matter of editing it to meet the platform needs. Yeah. So if you've already got the video, whatever it is you make, then yeah, it'd be crazy not to. Right, right, right. Now you have this unique blend of, you know, fitness and comedy. Like, um, take me back a little bit. 
what uh like walk me through kind of uh your experience like your past as far as like fitness is concerned have you always been an athlete i mean you, we, we talked a little bit beforehand you mentioned you wrestled in high school i believe yeah um so i was um uh, i was not a good athlete like i was the worst athlete i was like terrible yeah um it's so, like when i i started off in judo when i was 12 okay and um I, like, you know, got my ass kicked a lot, uh, and that's why I started in judo to, like, tough, toughen me up, you know? Yeah. And then uh, from judo, I transferred over to uh, wrestling, right? And so wrestling, I was, like, the worst guy on the team. And, like, you know, they got strings, like, first, second, third. Well, they had to pencil in, like, two more strings, like, when then mine was the second that they penciled in. It was, like, I was, like, fifth string, which wasn't even an actual string. Yeah. You know, like, whoever made the charts, they were, like, there's no one that's going to be that bad. We'll need to have five strings. We'll just go with three. Yeah. At but my they school, wrong. they just put, they just call that C team. Oh, C team? Yeah, they had that's nice. JV, varsity, C team. <laughs> so, <laughs> is that way you, nobody knows how bad they are? They're just all equally bad. Yeah, you're just all like equally nice bad or uh, you're a freshman, usually. <laughs> a C, a C, a uh, seaman. C, whoa, that whoa. was weird. Seaman? Seaman. You're a C-team, not a freshman, a C-teamer. C t yeah, you're a C-teamer. I'm a hardcore C-teamer. That's Think cool. about sticking with it. C-team for life. Throw it up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you wrestled through all the way through high school. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I wrestled, I wrestled through high school, yeah. and uh, like I said, it was terrible at the beginning, but yeah. I just stuck to it, and I made myself work uh, above and beyond what everybody else did. Okay. Um, and so I've always been someone that I put in the work in the off season. I put in the work, and whenever somebody's, you know, whenever the rest of the team's like going in to shower up, I go in and I put in that extra time in the weight room. Okay. Um, and so that's just something that I've always done, and because I've always been like that, I went from being probably the most piss poor athlete to being, you know. Uh, featured in the news repeatedly and dominating tournaments, tournaments, stuff like that. Nice. Um, and it all just stemmed literally just from being somebody that grounded out. So like my freshman year, I really shouldn't have even wrestled, but the first string guy, he got like a shoulder hurt. The second string guy, um, I think he got suspended for like smoking and drinking mom and what up. <laughs> Uh, then the third string guy was like, dude, fuck this. I quit. You know, yeah. can we swear? I don't know if we're going to laugh. Yeah. Swear. All you want, dude. All right. All you so want. We'll just talk then. Um, so the third guy was like, I'm out. And then, uh, that left, uh, me. And so I was the fourth string at the time. Cause I had moved up a whole string represent, yeah. uh, moved up one string. So I'm fourth string, but then everybody literally got just sacked in front of me. So I'm now in first string, right? You're the fucking man, dude. I, yeah. The man by forfeit, totally killing it. I mean, yeah. So, so I'm, ter you know, I'm just, I'm super pumped that I get any chance to wrestle. And then I just, that, um, you know, that desire of wanting to do it and just wanting to succeed. And then I'm fortunate. Like there's, um, you ever heard this? There's like three types of athletes, right? There's, um, there's an A-level athlete. A-level athlete is somebody that is focused on self-development, and so they don't care as much about the winning and losing. Like, everyone wants to win, you know? Yeah. But they develop, uh, they develop their skills, and that's their bigger, biggest focal point. They're, like, the easiest to train because if you're a good coach, they'll stay with you because they keep seeing skill development. Yeah. Right? Okay. And so that's how I was. And so I'm not even a great athlete. I'm just total type A athlete where I will push myself and just build and build and build. And as long as I yeah. build a skill, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, and then there's like your B level, which is um, those are the people that think that winning or losing is like innate. Like it's something inside that you have beforehand. It doesn't really matter if you practice or not. You just have the skill or they don't have the skill. Yeah. And they don't see or don't see as clearly the relative value of putting in the work to get the result. Would that be more like a natural athlete? Like a natural a athlete. Terrible work be, ethic. Right. So, like, it, and you see that more in um, high school level. Yeah. You tend to not see it as much in college because usually the people that are like that start to get weeded out by, like, junior, oh, yeah. senior year. Definitely. And so the people that aren't putting in that extra work, they just don't progress. Right. So then by, like, junior, senior year, most of the A-level athletes have converted to the third type, which is a C-level athlete. A C-level athlete is somebody that's not focused on winning or losing. They're not focused on um, skill development. They're focused on loss avoidance. Oh, yeah, you're just a loser at that point. Pretty much. Yeah, I mean, I can remember. I mean, I wrestled all through high school, and uh, I can remember my coach very specifically saying you should always wrestle to win. You shouldn't right. wrestle to not lose. Because yeah. if you're wrestling to not lose, then you're going to lose. Yeah. Or, like, you'll get, like, a point ahead, right. and then you're just coasting. And yeah, yeah. That's never Like, be good. aggressive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Always trying to go for the win. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the winning part is kind of innate, right? Like, I mean, why else are you competing unless you're trying to win? Oh, yeah, I, I think so. I think for the most part. 
I think unless um, there's some people out there, I think they start to lose that or maybe you can get intimidated and, like you said, start to revert back to, like, not losing or not make a mistake. And it's just so much harder yeah. to be dominant or be successful with that mentality. With which mentality? That I'm not try- – I can't lose your, like, loss avoidance versus actually oh. focus on skill development or even focus on winning. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, you can't really focus on the win. I, you know, whenever you step into a, a competition. Right. I mean, you always want to win. Right. right? But it's definitely not the end-all, be-all by any stretch right. of the imagination. I'm kind of to the point to where I've competed for so long. So I fought MMA for a decade. Right. A number of those years were at professional level. And, I mean, I've been just – in athletics like my whole life yeah i'm really to the point now to where i just really like to train and get better you're talking about just getting better at your skill and i really like to push myself right but i'm so over the aspect of like feeling i need to prove anything or i need to go compete to go be better than somebody else yeah i think um i think early on in like every martial artist's career there's that desire to like prove yourself yeah you know and i got ego um yeah and you know it's, it's weird because now, like, I don't feel the need to prove myself, but I definitely like to compete from the mere, like, from, for, if for no, no other reason than just from the fact that when you have competitions set up throughout your year, whether that be marathon races or yeah. half marathons or 5Ks or um, Tough Mudders yeah. or um, let's say, what else What else is there out there? There's obstacle racing. Yeah, there's obstacle courses. Uh, whatever your competition. It might be a wrestling match. Triathlon, might be a, swimming, yeah. yeah. Name it. You name it. You will train that much harder um, if you set out an event and then train for that event. So you're pushing yourself for that thing. Right. right? Yeah. Now you have a hard deadline. You're working towards something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely like that. I'm really kind of uh, transitioning more into like just individual things. I'm going to do a marathon in December. Yeah, it's going to be a tra- – I can't remember what it's called, but it's going to be – I like trail running much better than I like street running. Oh, yeah. It's so, a lot more yeah, fun. Yeah. So it's going to be a, it's going to be a trail – and um, I just like that, just to push myself, that yeah. internal drive. It's sure. like, all right, man, like, let's, let's go faster, let's go faster. Or right. Just you know, keep this pace. Just don't stop your feet running. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't stop your feet. One foot in front of the other. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Well, uh, that's, man, it's funny you say that because, like, that's one thing. There's two things that I look for when I see people training, and one is, like, the try on their face. But then, two, when I ask them what they're thinking, like, having that mentality where you're like, all right, next foot, keep going, keep moving your feet. Like, whatever it is, that internal dialogue is so important just oh, yeah. in, on whatever it is you're doing, whether it's marathon or whatever. Yeah, a lot of times whenever I would be doing cardio, getting ready for a fight, I would just tell myself, fresh legs, fresh lungs. Fresh legs, fresh lungs. I would just say that over and over because, like, it sucks, dude, doing that. Lungs start burning. Yeah. T- uh, feet get all uh, – or your legs get all tired and yep. stuff like that. So, yeah, those little mantras are important. Do you have oh, any yeah. mantras that you like to use or – Uh, I wouldn't say a mantra, but I get, I've got pretty positive stel- self-dialogue, you know? Yeah, you're good at that. I think so. I think that's, like, one of my better uh, – if, if I've got anything that I would say is, like, a gift, I've got, like, this undying positive attitude for the most part. I, but I shouldn't – I'm not, like, a – I'm very confident. Yeah. And I try to not be overconfident, but that's hard to do. But, um, you know, if you're, like, a positive person, things in your mind never go wrong, which can be your detriment it as well be. as, like, a blessing. Yeah. Um, and I don't have – I wouldn't say a set mantra, but I definitely – am really good at mentally pushing myself yeah. and visualizing like how and why I need to push myself like that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very positive, but I have terrible self-talk. It's oh like, yeah. It's like, well, I'm just really hard on myself. Oh, okay. I'm like, Adam, get the fucking together, dude. Like you're slacking. You're slack. I always tell myself I'm slacking. Like do more, do more, do yeah. more. So, I don't think that's negative. That's kind of negative, but I mean, I think like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I don't ever celebrate wins. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah that's not good. Yeah, it's not. It's like, oh, all right, next thing. It's like I was always taught that uh, if you do what you're supposed to do, you, you should, win, you yeah. should you just expect to win. Yeah, yeah. So don't go celebrating in the end zone, if you will. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you, you did what you're supposed to do. Right. Now get back in there and fucking go back to work. Right. Yeah. So I've just always kept that mentality. But it's important to celebrate the wins. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? And stay positive. Yeah, even if it's a little bit like something. Yeah, anything. Um, so, what did did you place or anything in high school, or like what was it? I went to state, went didn't to state? place. Um, but like from the fact, like for me personally, just going from being so absolutely abysmal poor, like 
to go to be in getting to go to state like that was a big deal absolutely you know absolutely everybody's marker is totally different you sure. started as a freshman uh-huh yeah yeah so started I, I did so as well so like starting as a freshman and uh even just making varsity like that, right that feels fantastic right and then you make it to state uh, man dude that's just so huge for so many people yeah and you're in illinois right right that's a hard state to oh yeah yeah in. they had at the time it's crazy now they got all these different categories i think they have two classes now yeah is it just two i think it's just two in, in illinois but it used to be just one right no well what i thought it was more than two but whatever i don't i don't, I don't even follow the i don't know i'd have follow to the divisions and all that when i was I'm in it, there Ignore were me. two and it was like the two levels were uh 5a 3a 5a was like top league that was like uh you're basically compete with chicago teams and stuff okay and then 3a was like your farm teams where it was like uh schools of i think I don't know what the limit is. It's probably somewhere around like 800 or something and less. Okay. Okay. Which one were you guys? I was 5A. 5A? Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Yeah, that's some stiff competition. Dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So post-school, I mean, what, what were uh, – where did you transition as far as like athletics and whatnot? Um, so after high school, I, I joined the Marine Corps. So I was in the Marine Corps and I got, uh, you know, there's nothing to do. And I was in uh, 29 Palms. There's like nothing to do there. So for the – like – I spent all my time in the military lifting, and then when I got out, um, I just wanted to get, you know, continue to stay in lifting and fitness. I just love doing it, you yeah. know? Um, so then I started coaching as soon as I got out, and um, I was, you know, just driven to get back into, I think, coaching because I felt like wrestling for me. Like, it gave me a lot. It kept me out of trouble. Like, I got kicked out of high school, you know, oh, really? going through high school. Um no, no, no. I like, um, it was a practical joke and it went terribly wrong. <laughs> Please do tell. Okay. All right. Well, um, <laughs> so we broke into the high school, right? Okay. We break into high school. We steal the PA microphone, we steal the PA microphone, take off the PA microphone. That was like the whole prank, right? Uh -huh. Just take the microphone. Just take it. But then the following Monday, right? This guy is having a quiz that he wants to get out of. And so ra there's a random occurrence, like nothing to do with us at all. <laughs> Random occurrence, this guy calls in a bomb threat to the police department oh, right, shit. for the school. So uh, cop, the cops show up, and you know, there's a bomb, and, I mean, it's a serious thing. So yeah. they're, um, the first thing you want to do is connect with all the students, tell them to get to a safe space or whatever it is your, your plan of um, execution is. Right. So uh, they go to announce to everybody, and the microphone's gone. And so it made something that probably wasn't as big of a deal to a much bigger deal, and I ended up getting kicked out of school. Oh, shit. Yeah. Right, right. Um, but it was like, um, you know, it was something that it would suck going through, but it, you know, it's not a big deal and it's in the long yeah. run, not going to be the end of the world. And, um, so I went, you know, went straight back and just, I, uh, hammered the books and stuck it out and then, uh, stayed involved with the wrestling, which was, you know, super important for me. But like I said, that's, I still got kicked out of school, but whatever level I would have been without wrestling, it would have been like 10 times worse. So I don't know what level that would have been, but yeah. it would have been a lot worse off. So um, by the time I had graduated, you know, I was really appreciative to my coaches because, you know, those guys don't make anything. They make like oh, yeah. nothing to maybe max 6000 I mean, there's, sure there's coaches out there making millions that are high school coaches, but mass majority of those guys make top 6000 Yeah, they're not year. making a lot, and they're putting in a ton of time. Oh, a ton of time. I actually asked a coach, what was the number that he came up with? I asked him how much he was making, and he said, once I finally calculated all the hours, all the time, everything, he was making like $0.10 cents an hour. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if you consider, you know, the weekend tournaments and all the... Driving yeah, and practices. talking to parents, going, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a ton of stuff. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But, yeah, so, you know, I, I appreciated all the work they did, and I wanted to make sure that I gave back to the kids that were in the program after uh -huh. I got out. Yeah. So I went back, and I coached, and I coached for about um, five years or so. Uh, I'd stayed coaching while I was in the Marine Corps. And then when... Um, when I got out and I started coaching, I did it five years for free as a wrestling coach, right? Mm -hmm. And I focused more on Greco style because that's like a, one of my specialties. It's Greco. Mm -hmm. And then I moved into um, a paid coaching position. And so then I got a paid coaching position and I actually, um, I started off as just like a wrestling and submission coach. And then uh, they eventually just had me running like a full MMA program. So I was running the whole program as well as um, competing around, you know, I had like 15 pro fights um, in the, uh, you know, local area, Illinois, Missouri, and, uh, Louisiana. So when was this, what was this time frame? I don't, when did you graduate high school? I don't, so I graduated in 99. Okay. I, I give up trying to guess people's fucking like ages because yeah. you look, I mean, if you take care of yourself, right, you look, right. you tend to look way younger. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm 37. Or, I'm 38 Monday. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday. Boom. Boom, baby. 
What are you going to do? Um, nothing. I mean, I'm working. Like, I got so many projects I'm working on. Yeah. If I just stay working, like, if I can get a lot of work done this weekend, that'll be, like, the best. Because I've got, like, the stuff I'm shooting for is so big that it supersedes any kind of el anything else. Yeah. 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 I mean, the work is so important. I, right. I, and if, if you are really doing something that you find purposeful and you're passionate yeah. about, it's, I mean, like, I'm, I'm, I'm usually excited for the weekends. Like, right. usually, like, my Friday, is, it feels like a Monday. Like, I'm just, I'm fucking rocking and rolling sure. all, all through the weekend. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, so, 99, and yep. then you were in the Marine Corps for four or five years? No, I was in for one year. One year in the Marine yeah, Corps? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I got out of the Marine Corps early, and uh, it was not my cup of tea. I just didn't feel it, and I was with some guys. I feel like, uh, you know, they weren't the best dudes, and it, it was uh, it was a tough thing for me to deal with because I'm like, you know, you're in this group of people, and a lot of them are awesome guys, and they will literally die for you. Yeah. You know, and then you've also got this other element of, like, the absolute worst percentage of people that you could possibly meet. Yeah. So you've got this Meathead huge. Meathead assholes. Yeah, you've got this huge, like, um, I guess, uh, spread of guys that are top notch and the best guys you'll ever deal with to like the guys that are the biggest shit bags you've ever seen. Yeah. Um, and I had a huge problem with that and, um, I think, uh, I definitely let it get to me, but then I think most, like mostly my biggest problem was like going, if I had to choose between like going overseas and these dudes are talking about like raping chicks and blah, 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 crazy stuff. Shit. Um, I'm probably going to be the guy who ends up putting a bullet in one of them and I don't want to be that guy. So, um, I got, I ended up getting out and it was a tough decision but it's one that I made and made full force and all my devil dog brothers out there like I'm not putting down the Marine Corps at all but um you know I have a lot of respect for everybody and that gives up to the to the armed forces and gives up their life as well as gives up sacrifices their time for their country um but it just at that time for me and who I was around it definitely was not what I was looking for yeah and you're a young kid at that time right? oh yeah. yeah I mean fuck dude hindsight's always 2020 20, right but I mean, oh yeah you're 18 19 however you um, was uh at the time I was probably like 19 or 20 yeah so and then you're there's just a ton of different things to take into account. And, oh, yeah. yeah. And you're dealing with, with certain people. Dude, it's amazing some of the people that get into the military. I think oh, I was, yeah. I think I was watching, I don't know, some show or some shit, but they're talking about how, like, gang members, like, get into the military, and then, like, once they get out, then they'll go back to their gangs and start oh, teaching yeah. them that shit. And Dude, and it's, um, you know, that I think was part of the reason that, like, I wanted to do it is because it does separate you from, like, your personal life, yes. you know? And so the tough thing, like you're saying, is that when you go back, if you go back to the exact same stupid shit that you're doing, like what difference, what was the point of going in? You right. Know? And so some guys, you know, some guys definitely fall back in exact same patterns. And, you know, they get out, they don't have a purpose. And that's the biggest thing is when they get out. And even when I got out, I didn't feel like I had a purpose. And I, that's one of the reasons I started coaching wrestling is because I felt like it gave me a solid purpose. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, so I think – uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of tough, uh, tough guys in it. And I think that, uh, I think overall it's awesome. Yeah, I do too. I agree. I was just adjusting the volume here. Um, oh, I had a thought there, dude. I had a thought. It's neither here nor there. Yeah. I almost joined the military. Yep. I, uh, I was going to join the the Navy, and mm -hmm. then I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to be a, a Navy SEAL. Oh yeah, and just like jump out of airplanes and, like, yeah. in the dark and go kill bad guys and shit. Yeah, and then I got divorced, and I was like, man, it's just not the move because I have two kids. Yeah, so I said, all right, well, I can join the the Navy and try to be a Navy SEAL, right. or I can be a dad, and I just decided to be a dad. Like dad, I think is probably way tougher. Way way, <laughs> way way tougher. Well, I asked myself, I go, which one would I regret if I didn't do? I definitely regret being a bad dad as opposed oh, yeah. to... Uh, I think it's a good, you know, if yeah. you had to make that choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you fought for how many years? Um, I fought for about four years. Four years. Mm -hmm. And you, uh, was it was it MMA, yeah, kickboxing? Yeah, I, I fought MMA. Yeah, and so um, I started competing when I was 25. I had, man, it was crazy. I had, um, I had actually been trying to get onto a fight league that I didn't, I didn't know anybody in the fight league. Uh -huh. And the gym I coached out of was called uh, Family Fitness and Martial Arts. Okay. Right? So it doesn't exactly strike fear into my enemies. Is that in right? Alton? Uh, no, that was downtown in Belleville. Okay. Right? So um, I went there, and uh, that's where I coached out of. And uh, I signed up for a fight that I had been trying to get on a fight card for like a year and a half. But yeah. I didn't train out of – like I didn't train out of any of the big MMA gyms. Um, so I think if you didn't train out of one of the MMA gyms, they didn't really take you that seriously. Mm-hmm. So I was I was pretty um, 
pretty set on it. So I had called repeatedly for a year and a half, never got any calls back about being on a show. Because uh-huh. I'm sure those guys get lots of random calls from dudes talking, oh, man, I want to fight. And then, you know, they never – and then the day comes around and they get, you know, get, oh, man, I hurt my pinky. Or There's I a lot of tough pulled. guys out there. Yeah, I, like, strain my back, training. It's like, oh, I'm sure, the first day you train probably. Yeah. You know, uh, so I'm talking to um, – I'm talking. I'm trying to get on this this league, and I'm not talking to anybody. I'm I'm trying to get on this league, and me and my buddy were at uh, Show Me's. My buddy John Courtney, and he sees this thing hanging up on. Uh, he sees a sign hanging up. He's like, "Hey man, why don't you go do that submission fighting?" And I was like, "Dude, I've been trying to get a hold of these guys for a year and a half." Mm-hmm. So random case, random chance. The girl working the bar, he knows her, and her husband is the guy putting on the fight organization. Okay. Or putting on the fights. So I, you know, talk to her. She gets fight set up for him, and he calls me. We get everything set up. And two weeks before the fight, my first pro fight, my first fight ever, because it was like at that time, they asked you, they would just ask you, are you a pro or an amateur? And I was like, you know, what's the difference? They're like, well, pros make like, they make 600 bucks a fight. And I was like, well, that's crazy because I'm a pro. (laughs) Like funny coincidence. Yeah, it's great. It's so so wild. So it was my first fight, my first pro fight, my first fight ever, first pro fight. Um, At this point in time now, Con- including wrestling and judo, I've been doing martial arts for 13 years, you know, and I've taken um, what w- probably we would call like real low end striking. Yeah. So I didn't really have a lot of skill and I was just starting to get into the striking game. Yeah. Um, but I thought I had skill because I didn't know better, you know, so it's like right. I had real weak, re- weak uh, punches, real weak kicks. And, um, it, you know, and I shouldn't say weak. I mean, I should say like uh, an athlete punches and athlete kicks, which I think that's an important an important thing to differentiate because if you are um, an athlete, you can generate power. Yeah. But if you were an athlete and you know how to do the technical side, which is the actual application of the fight, yes. uh, the actual fighting application, you have the power plus the technique. Technique is everything. And so it's like just having power, you'll still knock people out. But if you've got the power and the technique, you're just going to be more fluid. You're going to be able to apply it better. You're going to be able to apply the power more efficiently. Yeah, well, and also without the technique, you uh, you're you're almost capped at your yeah. potential. You know what I mean? Because sure. you're gonna go against somebody who you might hit harder than or right. be stronger than, but they're just gonna piece you up. Yeah, you yeah. Know what I mean, they'll just pick you apart and they'll analyze. You know, analyze your game, and then once they get a game plan or that they already have one, they'll just pick you to pieces. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I've I've seen it time and time again, which I'm sure you have as well. Yeah. So, um, so you didn't have much striking, and yeah. you had judo, and you had yeah, wrestling. Yeah. So I'm, yeah, so I'm trying to get a fight started, and so I finally get it started two weeks before the fight. I'm playing football, and I end up breaking my leg in a football game, like a spiral fracture of the fibula. I was, it was like a really rough, brutal game, and I was literally throwing a guy like through the air, and I was on solid ground, which I've done it thousands of times on a mat, but never done it on hard ground. Right? Yeah. So I'm throwing this guy. I hear a crackle sound come from my leg. My uh. leg breaks. I've got two weeks before the fight. I'm like, uh, you know, pretty, pretty bummed out because I've been trying to get on this card for a year and a half. It's finally going to happen. And then this. Yeah. So I wasn't sure that my leg was broken because I hadn't had a lot of broken bones at this point in time. Um, and so, I, you know, I'm trying to play it off. And I call a guy. I'm, hey, man, I like, screwed up my ankle, but I think I'll be okay. We'll see what happens. Oh, yeah. Get the x-ray. Definitely a break. Um, and so my, in my mind, I'm coming to two, like, it's a big decision here. It's like one, I can be like, Hey man, I broke my leg. And he's going to be like, this guy's full of shit. Yeah. And he's going to put me in the category of all these other guys that have tried to get on the show and told them they're going to fight and then canceled. Right. I was like, or I can, um, just go out there, fight. I'm probably getting the shit beat out of me. I'm probably getting my ass kicked, but this guy will know I'm serious. And then that'll at least get me more fights. Yeah. So, um, I went ahead uh, you know, because at, at that time, I don't think there were a lot of fight cards in the area. No. It was like 05. Yeah. You know, so it's nope. like if you pissed off a promoter, you're screwed and you might not ever, you know, they might, if they really piss you off or if you really piss them off that bad, they're not going to let you fight. Um, or uh, they'll give you like the worst fight matchups. Yeah, that's definitely, um, you know, like the earlier days of oh, yeah. you know, MMA in the, in the area for right. sure. You know what I mean? So there weren't very many yeah. promotions at all. Yeah, so this is like 05, 06. And I think, um, I mean, sh- there was still, there was just a, you know, pride still going on. UFC still just now getting known. You yeah, know? yeah, that's whenever, you know, the Ultimate Fighter was really kicking off. I think off. 02 was Ultimate Fighter. Is that right? 
Um, I think was it, it was later. A, I think it was a little bit later than that. I graduated in '06, so I think the Ultimate Fighter is probably like '04 or, okay. or something like that. Maybe '03. Okay. I could be so wrong. So whatever wrong. the Ultimate Fighter was pretty much the set off point for MMA, where people it became more of a staple name and a more uh, name brand. Yeah. Um, and so when that started happening, people started looking less at the submission fighting as some kind of like nut job thing that crazy people do and yeah. into an actual sport. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's still in people's minds. Some people still think it's a nut job thing, which yeah. I think it kind of is to it's an extent. A little bit, man. Uh, fuck, dude. I did it for so long, and I don't know if I would do it again. Yeah? Um, I really enjoyed it. Well, uh, man, I, I guess I shouldn't say that because it was so awesome. I got a lot of skills from it. Yeah. But I do worry about my brain right. a lot. I didn't take a ton of punishment, sure. and I'm always taking um, – like precautions to just heal my brain at right. all times, but still, it's just so hard on the brain. Oh yeah, um, I didn't really believe in any of that until you know, like within the last couple of years. But uh, you know, people would be like, "Oh, a concussion." They, but you didn't really, you know, at the time, I had no. There was no relevant point. There was no like gray matter in your brain or brain clouding or whatever, getting uh, repeated blunt trauma. Yeah, because I think at the time, people were just like, "Yeah, this is way safer than boxing." Yeah, no, but that's not really a good like comparison. It's not, although it is safer than boxing. <laughs> I agree. I still say that because. Well, hold on. It's kind of safer than boxing because I think that you are more likely to get a small injury in MMA than you are in boxing, right? Because there's more things you can like get a finger broke, you can get like ribs cracked, but you can in um, you can in uh, boxing too. Yeah. But I just feel like there's a higher chance of getting cut, getting split, getting lacerations, True. Um, getting tiny breaks because uh -huh. you're hitting like you know you're hitting knee on body, you're hitting shin on body. Yeah. So like you know you can't really take a, a you can't you're taking padded punches, which I think from a brain standpoint is dangerous, which is more the um, dangerous side of the fighting arts is the fact that you're taking repetitive blunt trauma the head right which is why football so uh, so uh bad because you're literally going almost head to head it's with car wreck. every time you yeah. come into um a, a, a hike but with uh boxing you know from the brain trauma still you're taking a lot of punishment but then when you get to the mma side you're not gonna i don't think take as much damage from repetitive blunt trauma but i think there's a higher risk of like i said minor injuries yeah, there's definitely that potential. I always just tell people you have more ways to defend yourself. Yeah, there's that. Because if you're in boxing and you don't have good head movement or somebody's just beating the shit out of you, you're probably going to get knocked out, right? Right. You're gonna, there's no inevitable. Like, you can't, you can't wrap them up right. except for, like, two or three seconds. Right. And they're going to break you. In MMA, if someone's better than me in striking, I can grab you, and then I can hold you, and then I can take you down. So yeah. it's like I have more ways to slow that fight down and actually protect myself as sure. opposed to just, like, having to eat shots if you're not that good or if you get too tired. Right. Yeah, man. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's so much. It's a more complex game. Far which more. it seems – man, it's – and there's, there's people that can make, it make me eat my words – like that, uh, who's that guy who just beat Silva? I don't know his name. I don't even follow sports anymore. Oh, okay. Somebody's like, you want to watch that fight? I'm like, what fight, dude? He's yeah. Like, he's like, I'm ashamed of you, Adam. It was, um, <laughs> it was pretty impressive. So that's what I heard. I'll probably go back and look at it on like MMA I would recommend or checking it out. Yeah, it's like, it's like a young dude. Who, I think he has uh -huh. like a karate style. Is he like a ninja? He calls himself a ninja or some shit. I don't know. I don't know, but I call bullshit because he beat Anderson Silva basically at uh, kickboxing. Is that what he did? Oh, yeah. And he beat an old Anderson Silva. True. It's not But impressive. hold on, hold on, hold on. Anderson Silva also, I like, I don't know, maybe I should point this out, maybe not. But Anderson Silva got caught doing steroids repeatedly, right? And so now they're cracking down on guys, especially guys. Like, once you get caught, they're more likely to test you again. Yeah. And so keep that in mind that he's not able to get away with juicing right now. Yeah. And that's something that I think is really going to shut your game down if you're used to competing on that and then you take that off. And there are lots of people are going to say, like, he wasn't doing that or whatever, but he got, I think, tat, like, Tested positive twice. Yeah, everybody was doing it at one point. I right. mean, TRT was so prevalent. Well, it was legal at one point, right? Yeah, just abso recently. Absolutely, absolutely. It was 100% legal. And well, it's, yeah, just not, you saw to just, they just completely cracked down on that. Good. I think that's, you know, that sucks because that's another thing. You know, back when I compete, when I, when I competed, there was uh, no testing at all. And you could, like, for someone even a test positive for steroids in the UFC, it never happened. And in Bay never happened. In um, Pride never happened. There were guys that were complaining because they test positive. I was with uh, King of the Cage. And there were guys complaining they got suspended because of uh, cold medication, literal cold medication, which is the most common uh, drug to, for MMA fighters to test positive for. Did you know that? I did not know that was the most common, but it makes sense. Uh, cold medication is number one. 
Uh, I think weed's number two because that's in your system so much longer. And then I think third one, I think, is cocaine. Huh. Well, they changed the parameters on marijuana. Like, you literally have to fucking smoke the At day the event. Of, like day of. Oh wow, that's yeah, good. Yeah, to actually fail. Oh, okay. And yeah, if you're and if you're out of competition, there's it's non-existent. Wow. Yeah. So they've changed that, which is really nice. Yeah. But Unless you're ready to smoke, like you smoke every every day, uh, then you can't do it. The one day you compete. Right. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> much, dude. That's. <laughs> then it's just throwing your whole game off. It really does. It really, really does. To be honest with you, gotta um, you gotta come into the fight the way you train. That's what I'm saying, man. You Make fucking it. fight the way you train. Get comfortable. But uh, yeah, man, uh, Anderson Silva is definitely uh, not the same guy that he used to be. Right. But I mean, that's just age and yeah, whatever, and whatever it is. Yeah, dude, you had a pretty sick trip to uh, to Thailand. How, yeah. how long ago was that? Uh, that was November on uh, Thanksgiving. Oh yeah, so that was super recent. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Tell uh, me about it. So back to what we were talking about okay. about setting up events, setting up things that train for. Yeah. Um, w- I set up an event on Thanksgiving. I set it up. Uh, I guess that was about March. So on, in March, we got the tickets going, and then um, we had this trip going to Thailand, right? So yeah. going to Bangkok, Thailand. And um, we set the trip up. We get the uh, – like a day before the trip, I reach out to Boone Sport, um, talk to CEO Scott Marr, and I was like, hey, man, I was like, I'm coming over here to, to go train at these different gyms, right? Now, keep in mind at this time, at this moment, I didn't have any idea of what gyms exactly we were going to train at. But I also have, uh, for those of you who don't follow me on Instagram, I put out sick videos and put out crazy stuff, um, you know, all the time. So I always try to step up, put out, you know, real dope, entertaining videos that are funny or motivating or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so I reached out to him the day before and I was like, Hey man, I'm going to be in Bangkok and I'm really interested in shooting some videos Bangkok. for you guys. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> so, uh, I told him that as the day before and I was like, Hey, the first day we're back, I'd love to stop by and check out your headquarters and go check out uh, Boone sport, check out lawyer tiger. Yeah. So we went in, we got to be behind the scenes. Look. And I was like, Hey man, we're going to these different gyms. I want to shoot videos for you guys. If you want, all I'll do is I'll put your logos on the videos and then I will, um, shoot the whole videos as if it's your video. You know, which I was going to shoot videos anyways. Right. Might as well. So might as well get somebody to benefit from it. So um, he he looked at a couple of my videos and he agreed and uh, sponsored a trip. So then we got the biggest thing that was the biggest help from him was that he gave us a list of the top ba- the top gyms in in Bangkok. Oh, area. shit. So he sponsored the whole trip. So no, I'm, I don't mean like he paid for everything. He oh. like sponsored our gear. Oh, okay. And set up the connect to, to all the gyms. Nice. So these gyms, like, they're not gyms that I would have been able to just call and schedule something. Like, you kind of have to know someone. 100%. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of them are open, and some of them are, like, real closed off. But the uh, gyms we went to uh, were just phenomenal. We got to train with uh, a lot of good guys. We got to train over at uh, Adachai Fair Techs. Adachai, what up? Got to train with Adachai World Champion Muay Thai. Yeah. Um, got to train over at Sitman Chai. Okay. Um, bunch of pro fighters over there. That was a really awesome experience because that was something, you know, it's like in Bangkok, um, a lot of guys, because the gyms are right in the area, guys will just kind of float in and out. Yeah. And so people that are on vacation will stop in for like a day or two or something or like stop in for like a, a one week or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but at Sitman Chai, because it's out, it's isolated. It's like out in the jungle. You don't have random people just stopping in for a week. Yeah. So most of the guys there, they're all guys that have been, they like planned it out ahead of time. They planned out to be there for like a month straight. And it's awesome because you're isolated. Um, there's like, you know, basic commodities around, like there's a grocery store and some like basic restaurants, Yeah. but overall you're pretty much isolated from everything else. You're like out in the middle of this, uh, I guess like, you know, just tie, tie area where there's like jungle and farmland and, yeah. um, so everybody, it was a, such a great experience because all the guys are such high level fighters, athletes yeah. that when, um, you know, you're training, it's like all of them are top notch and mm-hmm. top level. And there's usually like 16 guys there plus coaches. And, and they're all like five, five, 130 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Right. They're, um, I was definitely the biggest guy there. Uh, their next largest guy I think was at, I'd have to guess and say 185 to 200. Yeah. Which is huge by that's, Thai standards. Yeah, yeah that's rare. By U.S. There. standards, though, is not really that big. Yeah, it's pretty common over here. Right. But over there, I mean, they're they're all small people. Right, for right. Most, but they're fucking savages. Like, oh, they yeah. They live fighting Agreed. all the time. Yeah, and so they're... Um, Smoking cigarettes, putting it out, going and fighting. It, doing shots, drinking, doing yeah. coke. Um, yeah, so it's it's a totally different mindset over there. And the, the guys are such higher level. Um, 
that going over there and I like wasn't expecting to learn a lot, but I still learned a ton of like minor nuances on what their styles are and how, why they do certain things. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, another thing is tough is just having people that can hold pads for me is tough being a bigger guy. A lot of mm -hmm. people don't want to hold for a bigger guy because it's so, you know, it's a lot to handle yeah. even with the pads. Dude, yeah. Um, but the guys over there, I mean, they had no problem and it was great. Every gym I went to had guys that could hold pads and it was a phenomenal experience. Got to go to uh, eminent air, um, yeah, if you want, check out my YouTube. I've got all those videos up on my YouTube page. You can check those out. But yep. the three gyms, four gyms that I would recommend um, going to see are um, Rebel, Rebel Boxing. Uh, I believe that's the name of it, Rebels Boxing. So that's one. Uh, the other one is Eminent Air. That was a ridiculous gym. The other one is uh, Atachai Fairtex, which was phenomenal. Yep. You got, uh, you know, Atachai has an awesome job over there. And that one's like off isolated by like a pond. Yeah. I think a lot of people kind of heard about Fairtex, right? Yeah, yeah. They make good equipment. Sure, yeah. If everyone's heard of Fairtex. Yeah. Um, and then the other one is the Sip and Chai Gym, which is, like I said, out yeah. in the middle of nowhere. Is there a Yokao Gym out there? A what? Yokao. Are you yeah, familiar with that there brand? there are. Yep. Yeah. I use their uh, their boxing gloves and their shin, shin guards. And their How do you like their gear? I love it. Yep. Yeah. We, um, we, so I started using their gear in, I think, 2011 or 2012. Uh-huh. And um, this is before you could, like, really easily get it in the yeah. U.S. Like, we had to put together, like, a large order from the team. Right. And they had to, it was, we had to contact them directly and yeah. have them ship it over to us. Did you get a discount by doing a large order? Um, I think so. I didn't put it together myself. I think we probably got a little bit of a discount. Oh, but okay. if anything, we might not have. Um, okay. I just remember it, it just took forever, right? Because they hand make everything. It's right. all leather. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought it was pretty cool because they, they put a stamp on there to tell you, like, the year that they make it. Oh, yeah. So, you like, you always know when they made it. It's pretty cool. But, dude, it's, I won't use probably anything else, to be honest with you. Oh, wow. I, I love their gloves. I love their shin guards. Their shin guards, they have, like, an extra little um, area where it covers your knee, uh -huh. which is really nice. Yeah. Um, some just don't have good coverage. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's uh, man, it's tough to find good gear, and then like another thing is you find a company that has good gear, and then if they decide to stop making this high, stop focusing on the quality or whatever, yeah. then you see an immediate you know drop. You but, really do. Yeah, they start worrying about like profits and stuff. Yeah, yeah, but that's that was like Thailand. That's huge on my list. Like yeah, places to go. Yeah, you should go. We're going next year in January. So. Back to what I was saying about yeah. having something to train for. Yeah. Um, plan on going next year, January. Uh, like around, it'll be uh, end of January, beginning of February, because that's the best time to go because it's crazy hot over there. Okay. We went in November where it's cooler and it was still like 95 degrees and insane. Like that was the hardest, the toughest thing I did the entire time I was there was this warm up jog. It was the first thing I did. Yeah. The first activity I did was so difficult because of the way the heat was and it was a warm up jog. Oh, uh, okay. And once I got through that, I was fine, but that, that was so hard for, I guess mentally, but how much are flights to get over there? Um, I looked and flights run from 880. If you get them ahead of time to, uh, I think like 1600, you know? Okay. Yeah, so with some uh, some planning, you can you can make it fairly. You can make it over there, train and um, back. I think around you could do it for like twelve, thirteen hundred total. Yeah, that's not bad at all. I have a buddy who's going to Thailand here in two weeks. He's gonna go and train for a couple weeks, and oh, then nice. uh, as soon as he gets back, he has a fight pretty yeah. soon after that. Um, did you drink any of the happy tea while you're over there? Are you familiar with this? Happy tea? Yeah. So I've never experienced this. I was listening to, um, I think the on it podcast. It's not yeah. called that anymore. Kyle King. Are you familiar with Kyle Kingsbury? Who, yeah. He, uh, he was talking about how he was over there training and people just kept asking him like if he wanted the happy tea and he said no. And then later on he found out it's like psilocybin tea. Oh really? So, yeah. So like shrooms and no. they just steep it into tea. I wish they would have told me about the happy tea. Yeah. I don't know. I've never, I wanted, he could have been full of shit, but I I don't know. It's well, um, I don't know about mushrooms, but like I know drugs in general, like weed, they are um crazy strict about it. Like I think yeah. you get fifteen years jail time if you get caught with weed. That part of the world is really weird about drugs, right? Because they're all fucking gambling addicts. Right. And um so are you familiar with Kratom? The plant yeah. Kratom? So yeah. it grows in Southeast Asia, right? Okay. And it's, it's it's illegal in Thailand, right? It's illegal over there. Yeah. And it's because so many people have effectively used that to kick synthetic opioids and like heroin and different shit like that, that they made it illegal because it was cutting into the opioid trade. Oh, wow. Yeah, you want to talk about corruption, dude. That is dude. corrupt. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, like every, every, um, every bar over there is, and I... 
Every bar that I saw, it seemed like it had like ladies of night out front, and I, they could have just been ladies, but they really seemed yeah, to how be many, putting out that vibe. Yeah, What's that? I was say, how many lady boys did you did you hang out with? Oh, I didn't hang out. All right, so first the first night, first night, this safe dude, place, bro. Be yeah, on. yeah. Oh, I'll tell, I'll tell you everything. <laughs> so first night, uh, we're at uh, Eminent Air, and we're you know we're kickboxing training, and at the, at the end of the practice, we end up running one of the guys like a block over this dude, Sean, and I was like, hey, Sean, I really want to check out Bangkok. You gotta like, you gotta take us to a badass club, right? Because I'm thinking this. If we go to some big, huge international club in Bangkok, Thailand, there's got to be a lot of super smart people that speak like multiple languages and they're super smart. They're probably awesome people. There's got to be some of the coolest people in the entire planet in this area because it's so, um, in my opinion, like it's kind of a hub. Yeah. You know, a lot of people travel through there apparently. Absolutely. I mean, who doesn't want to go to Thailand, Bangkok specifically? Yeah. um, So... I tell him, I'm like, hey, I want to go to a real club. And he's like, dude, I got just the, I got the perfect club for you. And so we go to, uh, what's the name of the district? Cow, uh, Soy Cowboy, okay? So Soy Cowboy is the party district. And we go there, and he's like, we've got to go to this bar, Crazy House. And uh, I was like, Crazy House sounds awesome because it sounds crazy, and it sounds like a house, and those are two things I like to put together. I love both those things. Right. <laughs> So uh, we go to Crazy House, and, uh, and pay, you pay up front for a drink. So you get a drink before you even walk in. You pay for it, and you, you go inside. And I told them specifically before we went, I was like, look, man, I just want to go to a normal club, like a cool club. And I said specifically, not a brothel. I don't want to go to a brothel. I want to go to a real club, right? Yeah. I understand there's going to be prostitutes at every club we go to, but I want to go to a real, real club. Yeah. So we walk in a Crazy House, and Crazy House is literally – wall-to-wall prostitutes like you cannot move without bumping into a prostitute so as far as not going to brothel goes he did like the exact opposite of what I asked (laughs) so there were so many prostitutes that I could not even move um and so I went in and I don't I don't drink so I sat down I got like a diet coke and I'm sitting down drinking my diet coke and you've got you know girls coming up and they're propositioning you and they're like you know they're they're very forward about it oh yeah um and I'm being nice, so I don't want to be rude, you know, but also at the same time, like, I'm not going to spend any money yeah. on anything other than the drink I had to buy to get in here. Plus, yeah. I don't drink, so I'm not going to be spending whatever for Coke. Right. So, um, so I, get, I get my drink, and then finally they pick up on the fact that I'm not buying girls and I'm not drinking. And so then I, got, I pretty much got kicked out. Yeah, kicked out. I got kicked out of the hooker house. Dude, you're, you're else. fucking ruining the vibe. Right. Totally ruin it for everybody else. Yeah, so um, I get the boot, and the next night I was like, uh, man, it, you know, this isn't, I, I can't ask him to go to another club because, you know, because mm-hmm. he's just going to take me to another brothel. And I was like, man, I'll, uh, I'll just tell him to take me since he already, you know, did, couldn't get that one. I'll just tell him to go to take me some weird stuff, and then that'll be it. Yeah. So I was like, hey, man, I want to get a picture with a lady boy. And he's like, yeah, I know just the spot. And so <laughs> he walks me to this area, and it is like there's – it's, uh, it's uh, I don't know the name of it, but there's like three floors in Bangkok, right? Okay. So it's the known. There's two main that I know of, lady that I know of now, ladyboy spots. One is like an alley, and you walk down this alley. And then when I walk down this alley, there's like all these guys. But, I mean, it's like they're ladyboys, right? Yeah, nothing sketch. Nothing sketch. <laughs> just, just guys. And so um, that – as, as you're walking down, there's all these, like, what look like attractive women. And then they're like, hey, hey, come here, cutie. But, <laughs> but it's more like, hey, me go boom, 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 me go boom, boom. And then uh, that's it. And it's like, one, get the bass out of your voice if you're trying to seduce me because that's not how you're going to do it. Yeah. You're not going to be getting me going boom, boom. Like, uh, and then so I walk to the end, right? All these people screaming stuff. And I'm like, man, that was actually, I should have gotten that on video. Yeah, absolutely. Right? All these, because all you can hear is the voices. All these dudes, hey, come here. <laughs> come, give me boom, boom. <laughs> like, was that the cookie monster? The fuck? Yeah. Uh, so I walk to the end, and I'm getting all these cat calls. And then I'm like, all right, I'll, pre- I'll take out my phone. Like, I'm looking for, like, a map or something. But yeah. really, I'll be recording. And so I'm trying to look at my phone like I'm not recording it, but I am definitely recording. And I walk back, and there was absolutely nothing but silence. <laughs> <laughs> like quiet nobody said anything to me and I was like dang it that didn't work so then we go to this other spot it's like three three levels and we're walking around I'm trying to I'm asking people hey will you take a picture with me and all these lady boys are like no I don't do it uh and finally I'm walking through and this uh this one dude reaches out and he grabs my dick right and I was like whoa 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 hey man will you take a picture with me and then that's the guy <laughs> that I got on for a picture that is awesome I always think of uh the movie platoon I think they're in Vietnam but like the hooker walking oh you're so horny right? oh you want you some sucky sucky is right. that what it was 
Uh, like yeah, you times. know, to be honest, that's pretty accurate. Um, and they're, you know, for for the most part, yeah, that's kind of how it works. Yeah, dude, that's a wild place, dude. Yeah. That is a wild place for sure. I have a buddy who goes over there like once a year. Yeah. He has all the ins and outs yeah, yeah. of like how to travel. He, that's the key. You got to yeah. have that guy. Yeah, he is that guy. He's, yeah. he like, he's using all the points and oh, he's yeah. like upgrading all of his flights. Uh-huh. He's like, dude, I just flew, flew business class for like $200. Right. He said like you don't ever want to fly over there, coach, if you don't have to. because Oh, it's yeah, such I mean, a, if you can avoid it. Yeah, it's just such I just a go, long flight. For me personally, I don't care. I just go with whatever the cheapest is. Ditto. I'm, yeah. I will suffer. So I'm going to L.A. in two weeks. Okay. And and um, I was hoping I could stay with my buddy, but yeah. he, he's just, like, renting a room, so he doesn't have space. Okay. I'm just like, fuck, well, now I have to figure it out. I'm just going to rent a car and probably just sleep in my car for the week. Yeah, get a van. Yeah. Van or a truck. Exactly. Exactly. Like, I got to make this fucking feasible. Like, yeah, it'll save you, uh, what? How long are you to be there? Um, Wednesday. So I'm going Wednesday the 27th, and I'm coming home on Monday the 4th. Wednesday the 27th. So Monday five days. Uh, yeah, so that'd save you, what's the hotel over there? Probably like 150 bucks easy? At least, yeah. So probably save you like 750 Yeah. If you don't mind sleeping in a car? I don't mind it. All right. I will sacrifice whatever I can. <laughs> or Airbnb. Sometimes you can find those Airbnb rooms that might even be cheaper than a car. That is true. And then true. you don't have to worry about having a car around. So some of those, if you guys don't already know this, if you're ever doing Airbnb and you're trying to travel around, um, you can usually, I think, Especially in bigger areas, you can get people that rent out single rooms, and the single rooms will be crazy cheap. It'll be anywhere from like thirty to seventy bucks. That's true. Yeah, I stayed in an Airbnb one time, and I think it was like thirty-five bucks yeah. for the night, so it wasn't too bad. Um, but I just figured I'd probably. I, I, I asked a couple of friends. I'm like, is it better to get a rental car? Or is it better to Uber? Right. And uh, one guy's like, he he. Uh, told me of some app i can't think of it now but he's it's, it's kind of like uh, you can rent cars kind of on the go right and then the other guy was like uh you probably want to get an, uh, a rental car because la is so spread out so if you want to be able to like be mobile uh-huh. and, and like faster yeah then that's the way to go oh man but i don't know i'm not from there i don't know i'm just to me cali driving is like the worst especially yeah, in la i don't want to do and that so that particularly alone i'd either want someone else to drive if they can or have an uber do it yeah that's true that's true Although, I might just get a car so I can go explore, yeah. like, well, outside yeah. of L.A. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of, depending on what you want to do. Yeah. There's a lot of ways to tackle that. But I have no problem just being a hobo. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I don't, fuck it. Dude. My brother's in L.A. Or he would normally be if he wasn't in um, Afghanistan right now. Yeah? Yeah. He's in the military? Uh, he's He was in the military. He's an independent contractor now. Nice. Yeah. Nice, nice. It's not a bad transition out of the military, you know. You make crazy jack and do it if you are, um, you know, if you don't mind that lifestyle being away like nine months out of the year, then that's definitely you can make. Uh, I think the average start runs anywhere from 130 to 160. Yeah. I mean, if you're a single guy and you like to do crazy shit. Oh, yeah. That's the job for you. And really, if you think about it, it's probably not that crazy because I imagine that they're like um, they're, they're not trying to take risks. Yeah. You know, it's not like you're in the Marine Corps where you're, like, charging the front lines. And it's not like you're in the um, Army where you're, you know, establishing a beachhead where after forces have been, like, attacked. This is, like, way, way after the fact. And most of it's, like, uh, diplomatic protection. Right. Like, transport protect stuff where you're, like, moving somebody from one point to another. Yeah. And you're moving around in a $1 million, like, bulletproof. Yeah, bomb-proof. Yeah, bomb-resistant <laughs> um, SUV. With gun ports on it. So yeah. it's a pretty safe it's pretty safe bet that not much is gonna happen, but it doesn't count it out. Right, right. Well either way it's a good way to stack up a lot of money really fast. Oh yeah, and you don't have I mean, because you're just on this and I I just talking off what my brother told me, you're just there there, so it's not like you're Yeah. You're spending a lot. Yeah, I mean they they probably cover all your room and board while you're over yeah, there. Yeah, they don't want you out drinking, so Yeah. Yeah. Dang dude. Um so have you thought about competing in anything like now? Um, like as far as martial arts goes? Yeah, just like maybe yeah. take like an exhibition um, or I have thought about it. The like likelihood that. of it happening is like pretty slim. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, here's, here's one thing I did think of is this. Is right now, I mean, I train uh, anywhere from like two to maybe four hours a day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, train others or train yourself? I train two, two to four hours a day. Got you. So, like, I'm already doing the training side of what it would take to be, like, probably not MMA, but what you would take to be a kickboxer. Right. You know, Mm because I think about four hours, if you're, like, a pro, I think that's about correct amount of time. In a day? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's That's, that's more than enough time. I mean, you think about this. You're talking about yoga. You're talking about lifting. You're talking about actual kickboxing training. You're talking about technique training and speed work. 
Yeah. I would say once you put those five things, easy four hours. Yeah, easily. Yeah, maybe go for a run or something. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I have, like, I would consider doing a kickboxing match, you know, because that's something that if I got, like, a percentage of ticket sales, I'd make, like, decent money. It'd be fun to train Absolutely. for. It gives, like I said, gives you something that's set up that you're going for. Yeah. Um, but, like, I just like, you know, kind of like you were talking about the, uh, I, I guess you said you're kind of over it. Yeah. I would say, I wouldn't say I'm over it. But I will say this, I love training. Like, I love training. And I love training with, like, real martial artists, right? Yeah. What I hate is I hate the guys, like you said, the guys that are having to come in to prove themselves. They're coming in to, like, you know, they're trying to be tough guys. Yeah. Like, I don't think I ever had that. Um, I don't know. For the most part, I don't think I had that. But there's, um, there's an element to that. That's, I think that is one of the biggest things that I hate about the MMA scene is there's so many guys that do it to be like a badass. A lot of tough guys. A lot of tough guys, and especially as you get to the beginning. As you start oh, yeah. to progress through, you start to eliminate that. Yeah. Um, then you get people, not as many people trying to be tough guys, though you just get people that might be assholes, which that happens. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but you know, most of the guys, they don't, you know, when you take that ego away, it's not, you know, there's this, it's a lot of fun. And so I love, I love training. I love training with professional athletes. I love learning. I love learning from coaches. I learn, love learning from top coaches. Yeah. Um, but I don't like the having the intro, like the intro level MMA guys in. Yeah. Because most of those guys don't really know what it's like to actually be an MMA. So mm -hmm. they can't really say that they want to do it. Mm -hmm. And they can't say they don't want to do it. Yeah. They're just trying it out. Yeah. They just kind of want to fight. Yeah. Yeah. Look cool. I saw it on TV. I, yeah. I want to try out that UFC stuff I saw. And then you can tell guys that they're a fighter and whatever. <laughs> you know, it's fine. Yeah. Um, but more so. Like, I try to stay away from that, and even with all the kickboxing training that I do here, yeah. uh, I don't advertise that we actually do kickboxing. Yeah. Um, and I actually hide that, and then I usually advertise, like, cardio kickboxing, but you're learning kickboxing. So. Right, yeah. Um, so I really 100% love the training side, not as much on the competition side, but I think if I had the right offer, and it would have to be, like, uh, for a couple of grand, I would make, I'd do a kickboxing match. Okay, so why not? Uh, so what? What made you gravitate towards uh, striking as opposed to jujitsu? I mean, having done judo and wrestling, I would have yeah, yeah. Um, jujitsu might be an easy transition. I think so, and I think that jujitsu is a lot of fun. But I think that um, I think the reason I graduated towards striking is because you can do cardio kickboxing, you can hit the heavy bag in the gym, and you don't seem, like, as aggressive. Like, you go to Gold's right now and go kick the heavy bags and stuff, Yeah. and that wouldn't be considered abnormal behavior. Yeah. Like, they have heavy bags set up right now. There right. might be water bags, those wave, crappy wave bags, but they've got bags up. Yeah. Right? So you go into um, Gold's, and working on the mitts, working on kick pads, working on a heavy bag would not be considered insane. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. But you going to rural, like Gold's Gym and setting up like a wrestling match or setting up a jujitsu match, like they'd be like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, they like, would never take allow it elsewhere. that. Yeah. Never allow that yeah. at all. Right? Um, and so I think just the fact that I started to move more to the corporate side of the training, like, or not corporate side, I should say more of the personal training side. Yeah. Uh, and there was something, it's something that stuck. Cause here's, what's funny is, uh, me and a friend of mine, right when I first started full time into training, we were in the, at the gym and this is at a corporate gym. It was like at a, um, uh, some, some corporate gym that I'm not going to mention. So we're at this gym and we're, um, we're literally wrestling. So we're wrestling in the front of the gym. Now we're both wrestlers. And for us personally, we thought absolutely nothing because we work there. We're, um, you know, I'm wrestling with this guy. He's a wrestler. I'm a wrestler. We had some of the same coaches. Were there mats? Uh, no or? mats. We're just screwing around, right? So we're screwing around. Uh, right at that time, the district manager walks in, sees us wrestling, right? And again, we're thinking absolutely nothing wrong with it because that's just something that you do if you're a wrestler, yeah. right? Did you, did you wrestle growing up? Yeah, I, I wrestled. I started as a freshman. Okay. Wrestled all through high school. Yeah. Went, went to Lindenwood on a wrestling scholarship. Okay, so you wrestled Lindenwood. Yeah. All right, so. Briefly. It, Real it, briefly. Well, ha whatever. Yeah. You wrestled for, for at least five years. Yes. Um, so you wrestled, and for you and your wrestling buddies, grabbing each other and putting each other in headlocks and throwing each other and, like, you know, taking, doing takedowns, stuff like that. That's um, pretty general grab assery that would just be expected if you're a wrestler. Yeah, I mean, right? yeah, I mean, there's a lot of fuckery going like around. Like, no, nobody, <laughs> nobody is, uh, like, no one's sitting on the side of the mats crying, and you're like, hey, Jim, what happened? And he's like, well, he shot a single leg on me and took me to the ground. Like, you'd be like, wow, you're fucking insane. Yeah, you're a pussy. Yes, <laughs> that's pretty much exactly what you would say. <laughs> and uh, so then you got this, you know, you got a guy who, you know, nobody would react like that. It's a normal thing just to be wrestling. Yeah. Um, 
So like I said, we're wrestling. And then the, the district manager, he was like, never let me see that ever again. Right. Mm. And it wasn't like some lengthy speech. It was just that. And mm. then it kind of made me think. But I don't it, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. But I, you know, and I, he was somebody I respected, though. And yeah. so I kept it, I kept it, you know, kept the, our conversation short and me just being like, okay, and that being it. Yeah, it's like, uh, But then I really started thinking about it and just thinking about there is, you know, there is a double standard and there, all this stuff. But at the same time, um, that's what our, our reality is. So mm-hmm. I could try to convince everyone in the gym, which would be like shifting 200 people every single time that there's a gym hour. Yeah. Or I could just like avoid the grappling and start focused on striking. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you said, it is kind of socially, um, it's just more palatable. Yeah. Most people are real familiar with boxing. Uh-huh. And you can do it anywhere. You don't need Agreed. much. You can do it out in the grass. Yep. You just need. You can do it by yourself. Yeah. Whereas if you're doing like wrestling drills by yourself, people are usually. People, yeah. You know, <laughs> Sometimes I would go on runs whenever I was wrestling and then I was like getting a wrestling wrestling stance i'd be yeah. walking in my wrestling stance Practice on the side of the road balls and different moves yeah and yeah sure i mean that's all and to me like that's normal stuff but the rest of the world would definitely not see that as normal stuff yeah um yeah. and so i think that's probably the biggest factor um i actually love wrestling and i probably would prefer um maybe like jujitsu competition uh no i think i'd prefer the kickboxing competition I think that's 100%. Just because from the simple fact that I'm able to train kickboxing like nonstop, yeah. I can train anytime I want for that, which just makes more sense. Hmm. Yeah, I can dig it. I can dig it. Yeah, I mean, you can do that by yourself, like you said. Yeah. A heavy bag and some gloves or no gloves Sprints, at all. Yeah. Running, jump rope, whatever. Yeah, I love it all. I love it all. I, um, I've um, i been teaching jujitsu to kids for two years now. And, yeah, it's um, huge. I've, this past year, I've been doing more and more strike. I used to teach striking. Yeah. Like, Muay Thai and stuff like that, uh-huh. and then I transitioned more into teaching jujitsu. But yeah. so many parents want their kids to learn striking. Sure, I just started picking up more kid clients. Yeah, um, I think you know if I had to pick, uh, if I had to pick three sports, like if there are three sports that I would send kids to. One would probably be be jujitsu just yeah. because I feel like uh, there's a lot more complexity there mm-hmm. that could be utilized in wrestling later. Oh, absolutely. And then the flexibility training along with that, hopefully if it's a good jujitsu program, there's a lot of flexibility training, hip opening drills and stuff like that. And then the other one is uh, taekwondo and not for the actual development of technique. It's more for the development of cognitive function. So at a young age, that's mm-hmm. a super important thing because like, you teach a kid at five years old how to do a roundhouse kick. Mm-hmm. By the time he's 12, unless he's been practicing it, he's not going to remember it. Yeah. You know? But you teach a kid just cognitive function. You teach them, like, athletic skill. Yeah. That's something there's a development of, like, there's a, a mind-body development 100%. that happens, and it's just there. Yeah. And it can be reinforced, and it can be, uh, you know, you can lose it with time. The same way you can lose how to learn a roundhouse kick. But I feel like the cognitive function, because kids just tend to be more active in sports, I just think that's the biggest benefit of the Taekwondo okay. training is actually getting them to learn how to move around. Yeah, and that explode. body awareness. Yeah. yeah. And then the other one would be like soccer, because I feel like that's just a good fast twitch sport that I feel yeah. like is a low injury sport. But it's a sport that's applicable across the board. So you look oh, yeah. at like, uh, was it Jose Aldo? He's a, um, he's a soccer Some player. Some of the best athletes in the world. Dude. I, I, I always go straight to basketball whenever I think about soccer people translating well into other sports. Uh-huh. Like Kobe Bryant, one of the best basketball players in the world. Like Steve Nash. Um, so many other basketball players. I can't, I'm not like a huge basketball guy. And they're soccer players? They were soccer players no growing way. up. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Kobe Bryant, I think, grew up in like Europe playing soccer. Wow. As a child. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, dude. So, I mean, just that coordination, the hand-eye or yeah. hand-foot coordination. Speed and I mean, footwork is everything. Oh, yeah. It translates across every sport. Yep. Right? So, yeah, yeah soccer's a good one for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Um, I'm not so well-versed in Taekwondo, but I got my uh, both my kids into jiu-jitsu young, mm-hmm. especially my daughter. I feel like yeah. if there's one thing like a girl should learn – it's jujitsu, yeah. Because fuck, dude. I mean, if you're in a compromised position, we're on your back. Mm-hmm. I mean, which is a very real possibility, yeah. right? I mean, you want to be able to learn how to, you know, protect yourself from there. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, I started off at judo just because I don't think they had jujitsu. Um, it wasn't, yeah. It they didn't have it. One, um, if they did have it, it was like it was something that was not. It just wasn't prevalent. Yeah. So I start off in judo, man. But yeah, if there would have been jujitsu around, I probably would have started on jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. I can dig it. I can dig it. Well, dude, we're at right about an hour and um, I want to be respectful of your yeah, time. Yeah. Um, I just have one more question for you. Uh, when, when, uh, when's the Space Force mission? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no clue. 
I have been. Can you talk uh, about it? I know. Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I got. Check I out. Uh, look up Jeremy Jen in Space Force if you want a quick laugh. So I've actually been getting. Uh, you know, obviously you start on something. I've been doing lots of video projects for the last year, and I've been getting better and better. And I actually just recently started working with a Slam Agency. They're a local marketing company. I think they're probably one of the best known small agencies out there. Okay. Um, but they're they're awesome, and they made one of my last videos. And I'm hoping um, that I can get them. We're working on another one right now and then i'm hoping i give them to do more of the stupid shit that i do yeah um just because they're so ridiculously good and then uh, whenever they're doing stuff i always try and learn from whatever i can from it from michael johnson um but yeah so you will be getting hopefully a lot more um space force and all types of weird videos and i think steve carell is actually coming out with a space force is he? uh tv series so space force the tv show is okay. right around the corner okay that's cool that's cool yeah dude your uh, your social is just so entertaining you, dude you, you gotta keep it you know, here's the thing is this. I've seen guys, I've seen guys do it, and uh, somebody who does a great job of it, um, oh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Eric Cressy. He's a phenomenal uh, personal trainer, and he does all types of different stuff, talks mm -hmm. about things you would never hear from any other trainer ever, right? And he focuses 100% on just the message of training and all these different things, right? Um, I love that and all, but I feel like you're missing out the majority of the population yeah. by not making your message diverse. And I already love comedy, so for me, it's just something that comes natural. Yeah. And so I think, like, if you can make your message, if you can spice it up with humor, then do it. And I try to blend it, you know, and that's something that I think that, I reach a lot more people yeah. just because I don't have just fitness posts. I've got all this dumb shit that I do um, and that I'm working on and all these different projects, and it keeps more entertaining. Yeah, dude, well, it was very entertaining, dude. And uh, you're almost at uh, 10K followers. You get that swipe, oh, yeah, get yeah. That swipe up feature at right. 10K, dude. There you go. Swipe What's up. the swipe up feature? Um, So, like, if you go into stories or something, uh -huh. and uh, maybe, like, you're doing affiliate marketing with okay. somebody, and it's like swipe up, and you can – It'll take you to a link. Oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, so you get that swipe up feature. Oh, wow, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. I'm about to have swipe up features, guys. Dude, that's the fucking goal. That's the best. That's I'm, my goal. I'm only I'm only like 1,400 away. I'm going to I'm gonna stand, go out and hand out business cards, ask people to follow me. Just hustle. Hustle okay. away. I'm trying to get my swipe up. Yeah. I don't Andy know Frizzella just had an amazing podcast talking oh, about uh, just social marketing. Oh, and, man, I got to check that just out. Just real realistic things that you could do for that. So yeah. I know you listen to the podcast, too, I think. Uh, I listen to some of it. Yeah. I think I listen to more Joe Rogan. I'm a, I, do, uh, I really love what uh, Andy Frizzella is doing. Yeah. Um, they do like they do so many awesome, awesome things locally, and the way they run their company. If you ever want to see a company that's really well ran, yeah. um, from a leadership standpoint, not just from some guy at the top trying to tell you know bark orders down. Yeah, um, he literally tries to change his employees' mindset. He yeah. tries to build all the stuff to help build people up. Yeah, um, and you know, hopefully, I'm not going to be an Andy Frisella, but I'm hoping to build a pretty awesome video cast podcast which we'd love to have you on for that i'm down dude awesome. yeah just tell me when yeah dude andy's great i am um, i actually worked at supplement superstores oh in, uh, yeah, yeah 2009 2010 and yeah. I, I interviewed with andy awesome so it was just so it's so cool to um i remember where first form was then they had like two products i think they just released formula one right and uh and where they are today it's yeah fucking awesome to yeah see. the guy they bought it from he told them that there's no money to be made in the supplement industry and, uh, <laughs> and then he moved over i believe to the uh, um, fashion industry no. and then um, in the meanwhile he sold I believe all their all of his stores to them and they bought out those stores and then um, continue to grow from there yeah yeah they're killing it yeah they're it's awesome it. well dude floor is yours um, plug your socials if you have sponsors or anything you want to plug dude it's up to you sure um, probably the best thing is this if you want to see lots of my crazy ass videos follow me on Instagram follow me on Facebook um, I actually have a fan page on Facebook. I'm reaching that like 5,000 mark, so I usually only add people on on Facebook that I know. Um, if you actually have some legit you want to connect with me about, feel free to message me. But uh, the easiest way to contact me, give me on Instagram, give me on Facebook, and uh, my email is jeremyfitnessmma at gmail.com, or you can call me anytime, 618-670-4531. Um, other than that, you know, if you don't want awesome training stuff or like funny-ass videos, like I'd be really – boring you wouldn't i wouldn't be your cup of tea yeah go to someone else losers. yeah go go to somebody else's board go to eric cressy he's awesome um but if you want entertaining stuff make sure to follow me um follow me on instagram follow me on facebook uh you, oh you mentioned the youtube channel you have right oh yeah yeah and then um we're gonna be doing the video cast podcast stuff on the youtube channel which will be firing up pretty soon uh so i'm super excited about that so definitely follow me on youtube if you want to see my podcast video cast stuff because i'm only going to be putting clips of that out on social media so it's not like i'll ever put out full episodes but if you do want to follow my vidcast 
follow me on my, on my YouTube page at Jeremy Jenin, and that's G-E-N-I-N. Or if you are French, Jeanine. Yes, and I'll link all of this stuff. Cool. Are, you, are you on Twitter? Do you do Twitter? Um, I, I am on Twitter. I don't tweet much. Um, I just don't. But I, you know, you can follow me on it. But I'm not on it. Yeah, that often. I don't like Twitter. I only post through Twitter like through Instagram. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's better than I'm doing. So maybe <laughs> I should up that and start. I mean, there's no sense. Like I told you, if you're making the content, you might as well put it out. Yeah, it's just one extra platforms. click. On, yeah, on it literally would take me a second longer. So I, sh- I really need to start getting. Yeah. All right. So I take that back. I'm. I might be on Twitter in the very nigh future. Yes. All right, Jeremy. I appreciate it, brother. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, dude. This was fun. Yeah. All right, everybody. Till next time. See you guys.